introducing our visitors and guests. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. Okay. Yeah, well, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have quite a few of them today. Um, so we have Emma Renault from Soch. Um, Roland, I didn't get your last name. Colbert. And you are from which club? Valley View. Valley View Rotary. So we have uh, one visiting up here. And then we have um, within Amy from Thrivent, um, Scott, um, Scott White, or somewhere, um, Kevin Corkin. And then we also have uh, Sue Wellman from the ASAP Force Rescue, um, Katie Jensen from the UWL Free Dental Club. Uh, Jamie Wilson from UWL Physics Club, Annie Stewart from the UWL Therapeutic Recreational Recreation Club, Marissa Manata from UWL Music, uh, David and Darlene Crable from um, West May Sit and My, sorry, uh, Jason Coleman from the JC, and Alex Ritchie from UWL OT Club. Did I miss any guests? Oh, and then of course we have uh, Pat Stevens, but we'll hear more from him later. Hey, welcome. Thank you all for being here. I know many of you are here to be part of the Rotary Lights check presentation tonight. And for those who aren't here for that, but here visiting Rotary After Hours, thanks for joining us. We're glad you're here. All right, we've got some announcements before we jump in. Oh, hi everyone virtually. We've got a few folks online. Uh, looks like we've got Laura Lee, Irene, Kristen, Liz, and Carissa. Did I miss anybody? Well, hello to our virtual folks. Thanks for joining us online. And Sawyer, baby Sawyer. <laughs> Sorry, there. Our youngest, newest Rotarian. Right. Let's jump into announcements. Um, for those who are making announcements, please come forward so we can capture you on the OWL camera right here in this pink spot. Um, so our virtual friends can hear and see you. All right. Uh, anyone from Ryla? So Ryla is Rotary Youth Leadership Award, and it is an opportunity for Rotarians to work with high school students to help them develop leadership skills. It is a really opportunity for Rotarians. We, our club has traditionally had at least a few people go every year and it's in person this year which is a huge plus but it's only one day so it's gonna they're trying to make it a little bit bigger having it be one day but if any of the rotarians are interested in working with some high school kids to develop leadership skills it really is fun um and you get to learn i learned a lot about rotary when i went so it's it's a good opportunity to participate in and rotarians from any club can participate so not just after hours Thank you. Can talk about youth exchange? Yes. So I'll talk about youth exchange too. So we don't know our student yet. Um, we are expecting to find out who our student will be any day. So Rotary Youth Exchange is we have a, um, an international student come. Um, they don't they don't like live with our club, but they our club sponsors them and we put them in host families. So we are looking for host families. We would like to have three right now we have none confirmed so if anyone would be interested in hosting a high school student um, please talk to me talk to laura talk to ashley um, any of us would be happy to share more information if you have questions um, that also is a very unique opportunity and good experience to work with um, an international high school student can i add something i don't know if you said this but they don't um the host members don't need to be in our club so it could be yeah. a friend Easy peasy. You can take care of a kid for three months, right? <laughs> Good test run. <laughs> All right. Home and area Rotary Club service auction. Um, the home and area service auction is coming up on July 22nd. Who went last year? Amy, Ashley, Brandon? 
Who's, uh, oh yeah, we bought a cake. <laughs> a happy Lord cake. Happy. Um, it's, it's really, really fun. The Holman Area Club puts it on and they basically auction off like service events. Um, Bill's usually good for a cake and lucky us, I think Bill's buying the table and then first come first serve. Um, I don't know what it is per person paying him back, but it's, it's a fun evening and everything um, that Holman raises that night helps um, their club and the home community. So if you're interested, stay tuned for more information, but save the date for uh, the park auction. Is Bill at our table then? Yeah, I believe so. I, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be good. We're eating a good good cake. Good cake. <laughs> <laughs> Fun night and it's good to support our fellow Rotary clubs in the area. Um, speaking of fellow Rotary clubs, having a fun event, Lobster Fest. And I think we have someone in the room who might be able to speak to the Lobster Fest. At the airport, June 7th, I think uh, uh, tickets are $60 each for a full one pound lobster that's out there. We had some musical entertainment. Uh, be the fourth year they've done it, and it's uh, turned out to be quite a successful activity. So, uh, a lot more coming out in the next few weeks. So. Great. Best meal in town that day. So, come on out. Awesome. A couple more announcements. Marissa. Okay, I think I just told everybody. Um, but your public image team is working hard behind the scenes. You might notice on the table these uh, business cards. So if you're a member or if you're a guest and you want information on the club, please take one. If you're a member, take a few, put them in your purse or your wallet. And when you see somebody out in the community that might be a, a, a good fit for Rotary After Hours, give them this. And uh, then they have information at their hands. Um, it has our website, our Facebook page, um, the night of our meetings, since our service and social changes every month, uh, that's not on there, but please take a few. I have two whole boxes, so um, take them. If you run out of them, come see me for more. We're also working on a new after hours apparel order. First up is t-shirts, and then we're gonna probably do quarter zips. Um, I think I pulled everybody here. We're gonna probably do two colors t-shirts. The, the charcoal gray, and then one of these teals. So if you have a strong opinion on the teals, let me know. Um, and maybe I'll put a poll on our private Facebook page um, so you can all get your vote. But right now it's like 50-50, so you need some more voices from you online and whoever else. So um, I think that's it. Awesome. Everyone get a shirt, represent raw when you're out at all these other activities. <laughs> Gotta show, fly the flag, show the colors. Shark Tank announcement. Liz, do you have an update or who else could speak on Shark Tank? <laughs> All right. Uh, so our Shark Tank is coming up. Um, is it the second one in April? Sarah, yeah, do you know? I was like chewing on that. Okay, so thank you. you. <laughs> it's our second meeting in April. We could still use a few more pitches. There's a few ideas that are floating around, but if you have an idea for a project, grab a couple rotary friends and, and brainstorm it down a little bit. Get in touch with Sarah, myself, Josh, Marissa, a bunch of people know. Um, a little bit about the community and putting these together. Um, I, I do, you know, full disclosure, uh, chair the grant subcommittee. So if you have specific grant, um, Rotary grant questions, I can help you out with that as well. So we'd love to see your projects. Yeah, and if you are interested in doing a project, I spent a lot of time for my own project putting together a really in-depth email for the group that I'm working with. Um, so I'm happy to pass it along so you can copy and paste that and they can have all the information because um, there is a lot to know, a lot to consider, and they will have a lot more questions than I was expecting. So if you want um, a flyer, we have that too. So just email me if you have any questions. I'm happy to pass it along. Um, for our visitors in the room, Rotary After Hours does a Shark Tank style uh, opportunity where we can support a project that you care about in the community that needs money. And you get to pitch your, your project to the club and then everyone gets to vote 
on what project they want to see get the money. So a lot of fun, and it's a great opportunity for us to support uh, worthy causes and needs in the community and engage our Rotary After Hours members. So get your projects in. It's a great opportunity to earn some money and have some fun. All right, service. Who could tell you for her? My sister's not here, but I'll do it for her. Um, so our next service opportunities are um, the invasive species removal in Hickson Forest. That's probably one of my favorite um, service opportunities because I use Hickson a lot. Um, and so if you are a hiker, biker, runner, um, and use Hickson a lot, it's a super fun way to be outdoors in hopefully warm weather, who knows. Um, and we work with um, people from Friends of the Bluff Lands, um, typically my sister contacts uh, John Rigdon, who's a, I think, retired doctor from Mayo. Um, and we like cut down stuff and get our hands literally dirty. Um, sometimes there's blood and sweat, hopefully no tears. Super fun time though. Um, and then Habitat for Humanity Neighbors Day. I think that's the one that's uh, through like Phil's parish, if I'm correct on we that. Meet yeah. We meet at Trinity Lutheran. Um, and so that involves helping out some of the elderly or um, individuals with disabilities, um, helping to clean up their neighbors. Again, a nice way to be outside and get your hands dirty um, now that spring is here. So if you have any questions, you can contact me or my sister. Is it eight to three or is there like shifts? Or is it the whole time? Um, I want to say oh. it's the whole time, but I'm sure we could take you whenever you can come um, for that. You get breakfast and lunch. There you go. <laughs> All right. Rotary is all about service above self, and this is an opportunity to put service into action. So if you're around, join us. It'd be great to have you. Visitors who are not Rotarians can also join us. We'll, we'll take your we'll take your help. Um, social. Anyone have an update on the social uh, paints for polio activity? Yes. So um, pretty much what it says. So next Thursday night will be at Turtle Sack Brewery um, for $20. You get a pint and then four samples, which should be pretty fun. We'll talk a little bit about polio and what Rotary's um, role in ending polio is and try lots of fun beer. I hope everybody comes. And please register before. Definitely. Make it to this event. You might even meet your future spouse. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian and I had our first connection at um, Pints for polio, our first annual, so we should go and celebrate. <laughs> All right. Okay, now for the good stuff. Pat, Pat Stevens is here. He's our program tonight. Longtime Rotarian. How many years, Pat? 83. 83 years, yes. <laughs> it feels like a long time. Well, come on up. Pat's going to be our uh, program tonight. He'll talk about rotary lights and uh, administer the money to all of our folks here joining us from your various organizations. Thanks, Pat. Well, thanks to the After Hours members uh, for hosting us tonight. There are eight area rotary clubs in the area. And what we do at the end of each year is uh, assign uh, 10 to 12 nonprofits to each of those clubs so they can come and, uh, and uh, talk about their involvement with rotary lights as we give out the checks tonight, if you don't mind. We ask you to just say a couple of minutes about what your group does. Uh, if you know what you did at Rotary Lights, it's always nice to hear some of that as well. And if by chance you know what you're gonna do with the money, that's always nice too. Uh, over these eight uh, meetings, we give away about $35,000 and all that money is turned around to do good things back in the community, which is really nice. I draw your attention to uh, the flyer that's on the table here. This is a, a reprint of the full page ad that we put in the, the Cross Tribune every January. It, uh, it's just full of information and thank yous on our behalf uh, for those that participated in helping build your life. So, uh, all the nonprofits that are here tonight, your name should be in there if we did it right on here. We got a Gibson Kind in there, which I always highlight because Rotary Lights would not survive but we're not for Gibson Kind. We get uh, some discounts and gifted equipment, some use of all sorts of things. And if it wasn't for the gifts of time, we'd have to pay for it, uh, which would make a big difference on our budget. So that's in there. We've got our sponsors that are in there as well, a list of the music people that came down and entertained in the pen, uh, and so on. It's really uh, and all the uh, food that's collected and the different uh, food pantries that benefit from us on here. So please take that with you. I think uh, it has a lot of information in there for you. So to say that uh, uh, this was the 27th year of Rotary Lights this year, 
and to say it was a challenge would be putting it mildly. Uh, we had uh, two major setbacks, I think most are familiar with out here. Uh, one in mid October, when we take all of our pedestals, our electrical pedestals that we have that are all on a grid system down in the park. So uh, they all get to be plugged in, and some of those cords are 10 feet, 20 feet, 100 and some feet, uh, depending on where they have to go in the park so we can illuminate that part of the park. Uh, anyway, uh, we've done that each year and every year. Uh, take them down to the park during the week so that weekend when the electricians come they can start hooking them all up little did we realize that for the first time ever in rotary lights history we had vandalism and uh, those cords were cut and taken uh, uh, for the copper that's inside of them out here and a uh, huge loss thousands of dollars of cords that we lost at that point but more than that it was the uh, uh, it's the destruction of them and how could we open without electricity. You can't do much of a light project without electricity and panels at that point. But we were so blessed in the community at that time that uh, uh, I just want to mention that all the electrical warehouses in the area gave us the highest priority. This was not a good year to, uh, to fight to get supplies. Uh, everybody was a little bit short and behind on supplies, but we gave it a high priority. So we got our supplies in right away. And then we had uh, volunteer electricians uh, that came in to help us replace those, uh, those cords on those things. And this was all done over a three to four day period. And, uh, we had people that called, uh, one guy called up from a train company, retired electrician. He said, I never volunteer for anything. Said, I'm going to help you with this. I'm coming down to help with this. And, uh, so we had three or four electricians working in our building there, replacing all these cords. And I'm talking to the guys, the phone rings. How does this happen? The guy calls me and says, I'm an electrician in Eau Claire. I own electrical business. I've got five electricians working for me. We can come down and give you two days of labor to help get you back on your feet. Where does that come from? I never met the guy. didn't know who I was talking to. I turned it over to Mike Diver, the electrician, and said, if you can use them, uh, they're willing to help. You know, they, so uh, we did get things back up and running, which was a, a big help and a very nice compliment to the community and a lot of volunteers that, that helped with that as well. Uh, three weeks after that, uh, Somebody tried to turn in the cards for profit at, uh, at one of the junkyards in town here for it. Uh, the cops were called and, uh, and uh, she was arrested. Uh, and, uh, 1,200 and some pounds of cords in the back of a pickup that she said she found on the rabbit trails or the bike trails off of Murray Park. A little yeah. suspicious to say the least <laughs> on here. And uh, as it turned out, as we did more detective work and so on, not only did, did she have a record of that, it's a gentleman that she lived with had a long record of that. And, uh, uh, that trial is this week, by the way, to see what's going to happen to her. They did charge her with possession of stolen property. But the, uh, the results from the community were just fabulous to get that done. If that wasn't enough, then uh, uh, a month after that, in mid December, how often do you get 75 or 80 mile an hour winds in mid December uh, in Wisconsin? Not very often. Uh, but that was a hard part. Uh, we, uh, for those that are familiar with the project, we had our big 100 foot uh, enclosed tent down there that we used for entertainment and a warming tent for our visitors and so on. Uh, that moved 85 feet north. The whole thing got picked up and moved. And, uh, the only thing that saved us from going any farther was that it ran into the fire breathing dragon and uh, bent his frame uh, pretty good, but at least it stayed in the park. And, uh, on the north end, we had our igloo, which again we use as a, uh, as a warming shelter. Uh, the next week after this, we actually had two engagements and a wedding planned for the igloo, uh, which happens every single year. Uh, that went about 50 feet north and was saved by a light pole that saved it. And our biggest loss was our mega tree, our fully computerized tree. It's about a $40,000 investment to make that go. And, uh, that tipped over with the tower and everything bent on it and, and so on. But here's the cross for you. I uh, went back that next morning. Uh, after I got done crying and was looking at the shape that the park was in, uh, we really wondered if we could even open again for the rest of the year at that time. And within about an hour, there were over 80 people that showed up in the park. And I know a lot of people, but I didn't know half of these folks that were there. They came dressed to work outdoors. They brought their own tools. All they wanted to be was pointed in the right direction to fix or repair and get something going at that point. And uh, two days later, that was a Wednesday and Thursday, on Friday night, we were able to reopen we were minus a couple of our displays that we like, uh, but we were able to reopen. And that just doesn't uh, just doesn't happen. You know, uh, very nice compliment to be able to finish the year. And the, uh, the additional not only time and talent that we got, but the financial gifts that came in from all sorts of people that uh, uh, 
uh, big ones and small gifts and so on. A lot of gifts back on it too. It was a real compliment. I think it could only happen in the cross. But uh, it was really that nice. And uh, I know uh, we got a lot of calls from some very nice little old ladies, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I don't have much money to give you, but sure, my thoughts and prayers. And uh, I don't know why that happened down there, but I hope they catch those little bastards. <laughs> so it was really kind of fun to put all that together. And so, but uh, tonight we want to give away some money. We give away about thirty-five thousand dollars, as I said, to the different groups. Uh, we had a little under one hundred groups of just nonprofits that uh, that helped us out this year. Uh, they had different tasks. We couldn't get along with all. Uh, they helped that we needed to get this done. And all those trees that you see decorated in the park uh, are all represented by the nonprofits that, uh, that are here tonight. Some do a great job on their trees and some need a little coaxing you know, <laughs> uh, to, get them, to get that taken care of. But if we can uh, follow forward on here, and uh, uh, Neil Weiser, a new member of the After All Is Club, and at uh, Aaron's suggestion, uh, he's actually going to join uh, the Rotary Lights Board of Directors. So we have a, a Rotary Lights Board that controls Rotary Lights. They take care of the business operation of Rotary Lights. So we make sure that we have a, a budget that we're in compliance with all codes, that we have proper insurance. And so on like that, and, uh, and Neil's going to be joining that when we have our next meeting next Monday, which is really going to be kind of kind of nice to have him on board. So uh, let's start. Uh, I think a lot of you might not know some of these organizations, so it is interesting to hear from them and then see what the good things they do. In some cases, with the money. So let's start with the forest rescue. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, give me your check. Talk right. a little more about that. Very very special. Well, we're a horse adoption program that was started 25 years ago by a group of volunteers. We take retired racehorses off the track. It was from Chicago, but now it's nationwide. And then we find homes for them with qualified families. Um, I'm a special ed teacher by profession, so I wanted to find a way how to join um, kids in need with horses. So we have a program that's all volunteer that helps the community children that come and want to learn about horses. What you gonna do with that money? Feed the horses. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. We <laughs> hear from Cooley Connections. So I know the Lacrosse JCs are here though. So Jason from the JCs, uh, we always end up putting the tunnel together, the big black metal frame tunnel. Uh, we always end up decorating that, which is great. Um, and then uh, another JC of mine, uh, Jason, the other Jason, uh, he's always Santa down there as well every year. So uh, great time. And um, we're going to donate this to the local Humane Society with some other funds we have uh, uh, for Easter. So. Thank you. Thank you. C-O-T Club. So the Pre-O-T Club is... <clears throat> a uh, club for students at UWL to help educate them on what occupational therapy is, as well as give them some tools, general tips, and um, help them in their process for applying for graduate school. And then uh, this money is going to go directly to helping them volunteer. Just this last week, we made uh, thank you baskets for healthcare workers right now. So money like this goes to us doing volunteer jobs just to help get them more hours for volunteering and also give back to the community. <laughs> Um, so first we want to just thank Rotary Lights for inviting us to volunteer for the first time and we were extremely grateful to for the opportunity. So Kinesis is a dance organization at UWL and we focus on having a safe and inclusive environment for people with the shared interest of dance to come in and express themselves. We work starting at the beginning of the school year to put on a show at the end of the school year that showcases our dancers and their choreography. The check from Rotary Lights, it will go towards this year's show as well as future shows. We have many different styles of routines this year, including ballet, jazz, contemporary, modern, Irish dance, and a few others. Um, for the show, we are also doing a Legally Blonde themed uh, production routine, which will include all of our dancers. If you are interested in watching, the show is Saturday, April 9th at 7.30 in the UWL Student Union Bluffs Room. Thank you.
Do the real microbiology problem. Biology. <laughs> <laughs> well, physics club. Uh, my name is Jamin. I'm the president of Physics Club, and we just try to do different physics based activities and try to promote uh, physics in the community. And so the money will go to, <clears throat> we're looking at doing some more physics outreach. We've got an outreach coordinator that we're working with. So we're just going to start trying to promote. Uh, physics in the community. How many people know that the UWL Physics Department is one of the best in the country? <laughs> That's pretty nice because they didn't have one what, 15 years ago. They built it up to that now. We have more physics majors at UWL than Madison. How about that? <laughs> 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 How about free dental? My name is Katie Jensen. I'm the secretary of the Pre Dental Club. We work to educate prospective dental students at what it takes to get into dental school. So, everything from the application, shadowing hours, different community service involvements, um, and like the references that they need to take before they can apply. So, we help them um, along with our advisor. Helping them figure all of that out, and this is going to go towards potentially creating a scholarship. We're going to have some extra cash because the school is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> UWL Sociology Club. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm the president of the Sociology Club. Uh, we just kind of restarted this year. It fell off around COVID, so we're just kind of getting back in the movement for the kids in the group. I think we did this previously, so we thought it would be a good opportunity to try it again. And what we basically do is we help uh, people who are interested in sociology or in the criminal justice of major and minors. Get to know professors and what classes to take and how to further their uh, career and sociology majors. And um, I think we're going to use this money. We're going to try and do like a bigger event. We're going to kind of volunteer in here and there, but maybe want to do a walk a mile in the shoes thing to, where men like uh, wear heels and they walk a mile uh, for women's violence. Um, for Volunteering, we uh, there was a tree that wasn't wrapped up right, so we just unwrapped it and it wrapped it. That's pretty much all it was. There was only five of us. Yeah, that happens. Let me tell you. The, uh, uh, <laughs> we have a sign the decoration of trees, and when we get them all decorated, we find the real plug on top. <laughs> so it should be down below with the extension work you get at it. That happens more than I can uh, admit. Uh, UWL Therapeutic Red Club. Hi, I'm Sarah Bell. I'm the social media volunteer coordinator for the UWL Therapeutic Red Club. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Therapeutic Rec is like a purposeful use of leisure to meet goals for mostly clients with disabilities. They work with the, the older population too, and they're in the hospital, so we can work with little kiddos all the way up to. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I remember we definitely shoveled a lot of mulch <laughs> at the Broadway <laughs> nights. Um, we had probably 12 girls there shoveling for most of the day. Um, and I know we're going to use this money and we've tried to do a lot of volunteering stuff. We've made a lot of cards for health workers and uh, some of the local nursing homes. So this will go toward buying supplies and also funding our t-shirts for next year. So yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you. Let's be loyal. Everybody else, tell about the best. <laughs> Um, my name is David Prado. Um, me and my sister are both uh, royalty advisors. And I'm also vice president of the West Pacific Mind Festival, which is coming up May 14th to 15th. We finally get to go back to two days. And we finally get to have the big parade. It's the first festival that kicks off the Kuhn Legion festivals in the area. Um, what we use the money for, for the Sitna Mind royalty, 
it goes into their fundraising to help offset the cost that the girls would have to put forth and the parents kind of like gas for pulling the float, um, different things like that. So um, we do a lot of fundraising um, throughout the West Beaver community also, but then we also do the volunteering down at Rotary Lights. Um, we usually volunteer on New Year's Day, which is kind of hard for our families sometimes, but I know on New Year's Day, our royalty is out of school. <laughs> I can guarantee that. So that's when we volunteer. We usually, since we have high school girls, three high school girls, it just usually has us two advisors, we usually uh, wrap up the lights as they take them down, tons and tons and tons of lights. We usually wrap them up on the big wheels and haul them off to the storage. So thank you. The shoes that are still be around by uh, May 14th and 15th. Yeah. We can have a new girls this weekend. It's a good time to get out and do that. So I'll just end by uh, saying that uh, uh, we now, uh, Rotary Lights can now uh, claim that we have helped uh, 16 other communities get lighting projects started. Uh, they've come here, they spent time with us, they've taken pictures, they've been at our meetings. Uh, we've even had seminars in our building to show them how to build them online. And uh, as long as they are a nonprofit and as long as they have Feeding the Hungry as one of their main missions of the lighting project, uh, we give them all the information. Some of our board members think too much, you know, on here, but uh, uh, we repeat them. So this last year, we uh, ended up with about 270,000 uh, individual items of non perishable food items that go to 14 area food pantries. And that's huge. We didn't quite hit our, our goal this year that we wanted to, uh, mostly because we were closed for two nights. So, Point. But next year, we will get over the five million mark for the first time in, uh, of our accumulation of uh, non perishable food since we started. And uh, that's a tremendous uh, undertaking. And when you think that there's now 16 other communities that are also helping the less fortunate at that time, it really makes it even more uh, for really nice to survive. So, to the nonprofits, thank you very much for helping this year. It won't be long. In August, we take our applications for the next year and so on. And, uh, you won't believe some of the stuff they've got uh, cooking for next year already after they feel they were kind of slighted this year, but a six pack and a napkin, they can create anything. <laughs> so, thanks for having me. And all of the representatives from the various organizations for being here tonight. Before we let you off the hook, I do want to open the floor for any questions. Any questions about Rotary lights history. I was just that good. I that know you were very, very thorough. <laughs> awesome. How many? Okay, I'll ask a question. Yeah. How many organizations total uh, participated this year, um, and how many unique do you think over the twenty? What are we at? Seven years? Six years? Twenty-seven years? We did uh, one hundred and six this year total nonprofit groups that helped out. And that's about right. Usually uh, uh, we're fortunate that we have uh, about 120 that apply. Uh, and when we talk to some of these other communities, uh, they're concerned about their volunteer base and how do you get them to keep coming back and stuff like that. And when we tell them we actually turn down groups, they just shake their head. How can that happen? Because some of them are in, uh, in similar communities with uh, uh, technical schools and a university and stuff, but they just don't get that kind of involvement. A town and gallon relationship is not quite the quite the same at that point. But uh, over the years, I have got a stack of uh, of signs that go in front of the nonprofits that are not participating right now that have over the years. So uh, probably fifteen hundred I bet uh, over the years that participated. And some of those clubs come and go, you know, on there, and uh, uh, some uh, uh, do it and don't like it. Believe it or not. Uh, I can't understand that. It's a, uh, it, it, I mentioned that. that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually bark. It was. Actually, uh, <laughs> we needed that out here, but the, uh, uh, it is it is a lot of work, and we uh, uh, we give more compensation to those groups that help the first week of January. Uh, you're outdoors; it's cold. There's no question about that, and so uh, those that work uh, outdoors get a little more compensation than those that work indoors because we do a lot of stuff in. The, in the warehouse as well, but everybody knows that in advance. So whatever the checks were tonight, these groups knew what was coming, you know, uh, at that point, which really makes it kind of nice. And you can see the good things that they do with it once they turn and stuff, which is kind of nice. One of those great domino effects of where we like that's on. So any other questions? 
I have anything new coming for 2022? Oh, yes. Every year you get bigger, of course. Better, what, what is the <laughs> Well, you know that uh, that area under the new lacrosse center uh, is a tunnel. So that we hope to completely computerize this year and uh, and get that done. And uh, uh, we're working diligently on a talking tree for the kids. So uh, uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, haven't quite worked out all the kinks on that one yet, but uh, but, but that'll be on there. And then they're they're rebuilding that mega tree, uh, which will be even nicer than the one before. It's uh, it was wrecked, so it has to be rebuilt from scratch, you know, on here. That was a big loss to us on here, but we got uh, uh, so many IT guys involved <laughs> with this now that know what they're doing. I don't pretend to understand all that stuff. I just get them together and get it solved, you know, at that point, which is really kind of nice. So uh, a lot of neat things you are going to be able to that. Yes? I don't know if you emphasize enough, just some people might not realize that it is all volunteer and no one is paid. And it's a year long operation. Yeah, we have, we have uh, never have in 27 years, we have no, uh, no employees. Uh, it's everything volunteers, our, our board, our steering committee, all the, um, our steering committee is made up of uh, 24 people. And of those, uh, that's different from the board of directors that I mentioned about O'Neill, there's about 24 people on there. And of that 24, only three of us are Rotarians. The rest are all from the community. But the big number on there is that 18 of those 24 have been with me for 27 years. That just doesn't happen. I mean, between personality conflicts and getting burned out and pissed off about something or other, you're gonna, you're gonna divide those up. So it makes my job as president that much easier because everybody knows what has to be done and the sequence that we do it in and stuff. So and how many festivals in the cross have you uh, started or been part of? Not festivals. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> A lot. Especially interested in that Irish dancing part of it. Well, I was wondering if you were gonna. I, I picked right up on that. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, Chad, of all of the lights in the park, what's your personal favorite display? Well, there's no question when we when we pull the kids, they all love the fire breathing dragon. I mean, and that's a that's a, a a typical thing for our area is that we actually stole that from a catalog. Said you know we could do that in the catalog. It was forty one thousand dollars to buy. You know. Uh, we have less than 2,000 invested in that because our people knew how to build it and got it done locally out here. So we're going to do a couple other things like like that as well. So the fire breathing dragon is that, but the mega tree when that's cooking, you know, you got the big tree and the six surrounding trees. You put that in a sequence with music and stuff, and it really is it's dazzling. You know, I I never get tired of it and stuff. Fire breathing dragon meaning preparedness. Oh yes, yeah. They would uh, they would not allow us to have rotary lights. Without the fire breathing, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll be bad. It'll take some work. It, it got bent up pretty good, but our guys uh, know how to fix it. And that's the nice thing about it is that you know we got welders and carpenters and uh, uh, a lot of retired folks that are down there. This is a year-round proposition. Uh, today I was in there with seven people that were all fixing, repairing, working on something in the building. It just uh, it's an amazing community activity and, and and good for the community as well. So. We really enjoyed the campfire. I don't know if that's been there in previous years, but we really yeah. Enjoyed. Well, it, uh, this was the third year of the of the schmores, you know, yes. and uh, uh, so we had a campfire. We thought it would be a good idea to have some schmores, which we did. Uh, a gentleman from Caledonia, Rotarian from Caledonia, had his family there one night. They sat around, they sang songs, they cooked some schmores, and uh, he called a couple days later and he said that was so much fun. I would like to contribute to help that to get that going again. So the next year, he sent us a thousand dollars to go towards s'mores, and of course, they became more popular than ever. Mm -hmm. So this year, we added a second fire pit uh, down there as well. Believe it or not, we went over ten thousand s'mores this year <laughs> wow, that were wow, cooked wow. at those fires, you know, and stuff. So he didn't get his bill yet. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it's pretty nice. It, it's a great add on around here. So. Yeah. So I know a lot of the student groups are talking about doing work before or after rotary lights. And all the club here has helped with you know the directing traffic and things like that. So who does all the directing and traffic? Is it just all Rotarians or do you have volunteer groups helping nope. out there in the night? This was uh this was a great pat decision. I because it's worked out so well, I claim it, you know, on here. <laughs> uh, but uh, for years we would use the nonprofits like uh, we're here tonight. 
to take traffic in the park, to open the park at five and close it at 10. And uh, they would be the meters and the greeters and collect the food and the cash and stuff like that. And uh, uh, and finally we thought, well, you know, there's a, there's a corporate opportunity here, you know, and stuff. So why not ask these companies to pay us so their employees can work the park? It was a great idea, <laughs> it was a great idea. And now I think uh, we'll have 36 nights of operation this year and 30 of those nights are, are gonna be covered corporately. And in, in fact, in January and February, we get the reservations for the next year already because they wanna make sure they get a night and their employees enjoy it so much. Uh, good fellowship and they feel good about helping the community in that way. And it's a good fundraiser for us as well. So it, uh, it's worked out very nice. Yeah. I'd take a pat on the back <laughs> for that one. Any other questions? No. Thanks again, Mandy, everybody. Um, oh. Are like Grant or Ashley or Mandy to know how after hours, what we do for Rotary Lakes, like the other sort of 5K, for those who need it? Yeah, good idea. Well, way back in the very beginning, and I'll turn it over to Ashley, but Rotary After Hours was seeking an opportunity to do a fundraiser. We wanted to establish a signature event, and we just didn't know quite what to do. We were talking about a color run, and we wanted to engage the college students, and we knew that there were challenges if you put on a walk or a run in town, and so I actually turned to Pat, and I said, Pat, uh, give me your advice, you know, what are the pros, what are the cons? And he says, well, actually, I've got something for you. And he handed us the Rotary Lights Run, which was run by, I think it was a runner's club. Just volunteer, yeah. Volunteers, they had run this for several years and they were looking to phase out. And so we stepped in and created the uh, Ugly Sweater 5K under the Rotary Lights. Ashley, you want to add anything to that? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know how many years we've been doing it, but it has grown, I think, almost every year. Um, for those of you who don't know, we light the trails from Riverside Park all the way down to Rotary Lights, so people run under um, lights. It's the first Saturday of December, um, and this year we broke the five-year mark as far as registration, so it was pretty cool. Um, last year we could have an event. We did a virtual one. We didn't know what this year would bring. Um, there are plenty of ugly sweaters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it will dress up to be a max, and it's super fun. Yes. You know, ugly sweater contest. And that's been our signature event. We've raised thousands and thousands of dollars. We've been able to support several <coughs> international uh, projects as well as local projects. Part of that is what allows us to do our Shark Tank uh, support for different projects. So it's an awesome awesome uh, event in connection to the Rotary Lights. So, Pat, your leadership is so clear and so obvious that that's why you have your people with you for 27 years and good begets good. And you're such a great example and role model for all of us and your service above self for so many years to lacrosse. Um, part of that special sauce of what makes lacrosse come together and do the right thing is um, I think because we've had leaders like you in our community who really give that um, service above self motto day in and day out, year in and year out. Um, and I'm gonna put some board members on the spot because this isn't part of the program, but I think we have a little bit of time left, not too much, but a little bit. I wanted to talk a bit about leadership and the opportunity with Rotary. Um, Rotary and serving on our board is a fantastic opportunity to hone your skills in leadership. If you are, uh, no matter where you are in your career or where you are or what your interests are, being part of Rotary After Hours leadership has been an amazing opportunity. I feel so fortunate I had that opportunity eight years ago and uh, really proud to be serving in a leadership role now in my career. And I credit my experience of leading at the time 40 volunteers to great, um, great results and great goals that we accomplished together um, that, that helped prepare me uh, in my career and gave me opportunities that I wouldn't have had otherwise. And so I just would ask the board members, I know we've had nominations go out, is there an update on our elections process that's coming soon? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have gone through the process of nomination and people accepting them. So now the election committee will be meeting in the next week to talk about 
that, and then I will be meeting with those that accepted nomination, and then um, the elections committee will vote on the final committee before it is brought to our club to do the final vote. So I think um, we should have that by May, I think is when the timeline is, and we will be on the board for next year, starting July 1st. Wonderful. Thanks, Ashley. Sorry for putting you on the spot on that, but um, whether you're on the, the ballot or you're not this year, definitely consider the opportunity. Uh, throw your hat in the ring. You'll meet some wonderful friends, have a great time, and gain a lot. You gain more than what you probably feel that you'll give. So I highly recommend it. And uh, for any of you who are visiting tonight, if you're looking to get involved and Again, gain some great friends, maybe meet a significant other, <laughs> commit to a wonderful organization and get involved and um, have that, that real sense of social connectedness that we have in our community. If you're looking for that, that Rotary is a great place to do that. And this is a great place to be. So welcome. And um, I hope you'll reach out and connect with some of our Rotarians who are here. If you're not, if you're here to collect a check, you too are welcome to check out what we're doing here at Rotary After Hours. And for those of you who are maybe graduating and going other places, they do have Rotary all around the world. So there's a place for you wherever you are. Um, anything else tonight to cover for announcements? I think our next meeting is April 12th. And the program is TBD, according to Josh right now. Okay, program is to be determined, but it'll be good. We always come up with something good. So, all right, well, if there's nothing else, um, yeah. I think there's probably a lot of questions, so anybody here that wants to take um, the Rotary Community Drive Club Tour, you can come and see what we have to offer. Yes, we take leftovers home. We'll have lunch for tomorrow, be all set to go. So, all right, well, we end our meetings, um, every meeting with the five-way test. So if everyone would stand and recite the five-way test. Is it very concerned? Will be good will in the directions? Will be beneficial to all concerned? Is it will not? Woo, all right, thanks everyone. Thank you, Pat. Pleasure. Yeah. See you Monday. That was very helpful, right? Perfect. Thank you.